Watching a most unusual right. course. The advantage is that you can have something vegging already in another space. And if the curriculum is unusual, time. so is his job description. Hey, I'm a medical marijuana instructor or professor. <laughs> Welcome to Marijuana 101. Parts per million is at 40. That's very low. Not just a single class, but an entire school, Oaksterdam University, devoted to pot. Um, Vaporizing is one of the best uh, ways to take cannabis. Students in Oakland, California pay $250 for weekend courses showing them how to grow marijuana, harvest it, and most importantly, how to avoid getting arrested in the process. That basically gets us through federal law. I had never even in my life seen a marijuana plant growing up. It was my very first time I've ever seen one. Given her background, Lori Strand might seem like the last person you'd expect to find here. I have a husband who is a contractor. I'm a real estate agent. And we are, we have a Dalmatian. I mean, we're just a very normal, in fact, my husband is in this movie right now with my three boys because I'm here at class. <laughs> it's thousands of people like Lori Strand, seemingly normal in every way, who inspired the Showtime hit Weeds. The central character, Nancy Botwin, is a busy suburban mom with two young boys who grows pot to help support her family. A page that could be ripped right out of Strand's life. I'm not going to start growing and selling today. I mean, that's not going to happen, but I can see that perhaps in the future that could be my new calling. <laughs> Oakland was the first city to issue permits for cannabis. And Strand's marijuana class is just one small part of a local culture centered on marijuana. This particular part of Oakland is known as Oaksterdam, the name borrowed from Amsterdam, the most pot-friendly city in the world, where marijuana is completely legal. Now, that's not the case here in Oakland. But you know what? You'd be forgiven for thinking it was. This used to be the big shopping district. We met up with Richard Lee, the founder of Oaksterdam University and an out-in-the-open pot entrepreneur. He hopes to revitalize this struggling area of Oakland through an increasingly legitimate marijuana trade. You spent a lot of time in Amsterdam. Is that really your model? Is that your template for what you would love to see happen here? Exactly, yes. When you go to Amsterdam, you see that it's just tourism and jobs and, you know, it fits in with the rest of the economy. The goal is to show that it can be done safely, but at the same time, you're making money at it. Right. Yes, we believe in earning an honest living. California is leading a growing movement toward an increasing permissiveness when it comes to marijuana. Eleven states have decriminalized first-time possession. Here, there are hundreds of places where you can walk into a store and buy pot. All it takes is a doctor's recommendation, remarkably easy to come by, which entitles you to a medical marijuana card. Under state law, you can then possess up to eight ounces of pot, or about 160 marijuana cigarettes. This is the second dispensary you opened that we're heading to right now. Exactly. Lee owns the local marijuana dispensary, also known as the Blue Sky Cafe. Are kids allowed in? In the front. That's part of our service. They come in, get a smoothie or some cereal and milk, and we'll look after them while the patient goes in the back. Walk to the back of the shop and you'll find a formalized, even sophisticated, buying process. Okay, well, this is Trish Regal. Okay, well, I'm used to too, so uh, you're the bartender, right? Or bartender. Bartender. Lee showed us the dispensary's marijuana menu, which contains samples of the four varieties of pot that are sold here at any one time. This is different than... Than these. What's different about them? Red and white wine, you know, oh, different, different flavors of wine. Yep. These are samples that you can pull out, open that up and smell it. And then see if you can see that they smell the difference between that and this. Yeah, I think that one smells a little better. Yeah, see? There's not only marijuana to smoke. So that comes from one particular farm and that farm will always package it like that? Exactly. But to eat as well. Ranging from 5 to 25 depending on what you like. We have caramels, candies, pies, brownies, peanut butter, chocolate chip, chocolates, truffles, and then olive oil and salad dressing over here. Oh my up goodness. Here. Wow. It's like a grocery store back here. Okay, what is this? This is our plant catalog. We also sells marijuana plants. So these are our starter plants for people to grow their own. 
And this is the nursery where these pot gardeners tend to the plants. These employees receive medical benefits as part of their paychecks. Even the state of California has its hand in the marijuana till. Sending letters to the dispensaries reminding them of their obligation to pay tax on all the pot sold. In 2006, the state collected more than $11 million in sales tax revenue. How much money do you pay in sales tax to the state of California every year? 300000 300000 And what do you pay in federal income tax? About double that. About five hundred, six hundred thousand. 600000 So the government's making money off you too? Definitely. And yet his entire enterprise comes with considerable risk. Possessing marijuana may be legal under California state law, but it is completely illegal under federal statute. And the more you sell, the greater the chances of being busted by the DEA, which Richard Lee knows all too well. How often do you get the marijuana in? Every week? Every month? Every week. How much do you order on any given week? Yeah, that's kind of getting into little sensitive areas as far as trying to get exact numbers on that. Why? I'm not sure I feel comfortable with that. Why? It's just kind of goes into the uh, area of taunting the DEA. It's a matter of having a little respect for your opposition. Coming up. We knew that there was marijuana coming in. We knew it was on the street. We knew somebody was bringing it in. We had no idea who it was or where it was. A miracle.